This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Thousands of people rallied in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, calling on President Obama to reject the Keystone XL pipeline. The rally came four days after Earth Day, when a group of ranchers, farmers and tribal communities from along the pipeline route rode into Washington, D.C. and set up the Reject and Protect encampment near the White House. The group called themselves the Cowboy Indian Alliance. During Saturday's procession, members of the alliance presented a hand-painted teepee to the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian as a gift to President Obama. The teepee represented the Cowboy and Indian Alliance's hopes for protected land and clean water. Legendary musician Neil Young joined the protesters who rallied on the National Mall, then marched past the Capitol building. We're all children of Mother Earth, and that's why I'm here, because I, I feel we're all threatened by what's happening as a planet, we're threatened. I, I feel that that the fossil fuel age is ending. It's, it's having its first death gasps, and we need to keep pushing. We need to stop this pipeline, which is bringing this really bad fuel from Canada, from the tail of the snake all the way down to the head of the snake in Texas. Saturday's rally came a week after the Obama administration announced it had again delayed a decision on approval or rejection of the Keystone XL pipeline that would carry tar sands oil from Alberta to the Gulf Coast. The State Department says it'll await the results of legal challenges to the pipeline's proposed route through Nebraska. That means a final move would not likely come until after the midterm elections. To talk more about the protests and the pipeline, we're joined by three guests in Washington, D.C., Gary Doerr is with us. He is the media and logistical coordinator for the Rosebud Sioux Tribe's Shield the People Project, an effort to defend against the Keystone XL pipeline. He's a member of the Nez Perce Nation and was one of the organizers of the Reject and Protect Encampment in D.C. Joining us here in New York is actress and activist Daryl Hannah. She participated in the Reject and Protect protests in D.C. She's been arrested three times for protests against the Keystone XL. Also with us here in New York is Art Tandera a Nebraska farmer who was in Washington, D.C., for the protests. He's also a member of the Cowboy Indian Alliance. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Let's begin with Gary Doerr in Washington. Why is this issue, the Keystone XL, so important to you? Uh, um good morning. The, this issue is important to me, uh, certainly for the Rosebud Sioux Tribe and the Great Sioux Nation, because it threatens the Oglala Aquifer, which provides drinking water for 2.3 million people. It also threatens the Missouri River, uh, which provides uh, drinking water for probably a couple another million. So we're talking about 5 million American citizens who, are, uh, who have their drinking water supply threatened. Um, this water supply also provides uh, crops, uh, water for our crops for irrigation. So now we're talking about more and more millions and millions of people who could be affected. This could be an economic uh, uh, bust for the Midwest. Art Tanderup, you're a Nebraska farmer. Uh, you're part of the Cowboy Indian Alliance. Explain how this came together and why you feel so strongly about this. This could bring business to Nebraska, couldn't it? Uh, yes, it could be. It could bring business to Nebraska, but it's the wrong type of business. It's the business that would bring uh, temporary jobs uh, for the construction period, and then there would only be approximately 35 jobs for the duration, or for after that, for maintenance, etc., of the pipeline. Uh, the Cowboy Indian Alliance was formed a, a couple years ago uh, because of common interests between farmers ranchers and Native Americans in, in northern Nebraska and southern South Dakota. Uh, we've come together as uh, brothers and sisters uh, to, to fight this Keystone XL pipeline uh, because of the risk to the Ogallala Aquifer, uh, to the land, to the health of the people. Explain what that is, the Ogallala Aquifer. Okay, the Ogallala Aquifer is uh, like the United, the United States' largest 
clean water aquifer, underground aquifer. Uh, it covers, it starts up in South Dakota, covers most of Nebraska, and on down into Kansas and uh, parts of Oklahoma as well. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's not necessarily a big lake under the ground. It's more of a of a huge sponge of uh, in gravel, sand, etc. That uh, that provides clean drinking water. It provides uh, water for livestock, for uh, wildlife, for uh, you know human consumption, for irrigation. It's it's the livelihood of the heartland. And explain why your farm, your community, is threatened. Uh, the, Where do you live? We, we live uh, north of Neely, Nebraska, and we're right on the pipeline route, uh, as well as part of our farm is on the Ponca Trail of Tears uh, from back in the uh, 1870s when Chief Standing Bear and his people were driven from uh, the Niobrara area to Oklahoma.